Hey folks, um, we're going to do a review, a debate review, between um, Christian John Lennox versus atheist Lawrence Krauss. Now, this debate went very poorly for Lawrence Krauss. Atheist agnostics alike are starting to nickname Lawrence Krauss the mad scientist because he comes off crazy and mad. Check this out. If you want to hear the whole debate because it's it's really long I think it's like over an hour so I won't play that for you now but I'm going to play some highlights where Lawrence Krauss goes absolutely insane thus the mad scientist nickname that he's getting and even the moderator of the debate has to constantly bring him under control because he's like he's very angry because what John Lennox does in the debate is he points out to Lawrence Krauss that his science that he's trying to promote, which is not even provable. Lawrence Krauss is trying to say that nothing created the universe. John Lennox finally says what I've been begging people to say for the longest time, that Lawrence Krauss, his theories are rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Now, you can go to Debates on Video right here at the top left, see uh, .blogspot.com, and you can see this debate in its entirety. But you've got to hear this. Let's review it. You can also read the debate review below here. You also can watch this debate, Crowd Laughs at Richard Dawkins. Check that out. So I'm going to put this link, debatesonvideo.blogspot.com, below the video in the description. Go there, listen to this. But in this debate, John Lennox is going to say that Lawrence Krauss failed to provide evidence, proof and evidence that would show atheism is accurate and correct. Lennox is going to say, you haven't proved your atheism. And then Lennox totally gives Lawrence Krauss a spanking. And he spanks him like an unruly stepchild. <laughs> and Lawrence Krauss has a tizzy fit. But someone had to do it. Lawrence Krauss is just a mad scientist. Check this out. This is an epic debate moment. God bless John Lennox for finally pointing out. You know, look, when someone's crazy and you have crazy ideas, we don't have to sit there and accept it. We can say, look, you're like crazy. He's a mad scientist, this Lawrence Krauss. Check it out. Okay, so here we go. We're going to point out some epic clips here. You guys are going to laugh. So the moderator of the debate brings up the Achilles heel of Lawrence Krauss. Everyone's making fun of Lawrence Krauss because he's going around trying to sell his book saying that nothing created everything. Uh, proving once again that atheism is madness. You guys go on YouTube, type in proof atheism is madness, and you'll see what I mean. Look for that video. Listen to this. I'm going to stop it and kind of put some input here. This is Lawrence Krauss being asked the question about his stupid theory that nothing created everything. So coming back to this question then, gentlemen, um, that we heard in that clip from the program, uh, this idea it seems very counterintuitive, Lawrence, and, and uh, in the, your book you attempt to show why you do believe that it's logical to talk about a universe literally popping into existence from nothing. Now, <laughs> you can tell the moderator is trying to have a straight face. Everyone heard that. This is When we're talking about Lawrence Krauss saying that he believes nothing created the universe, he really believes that. Well, he's trying to portray he really believes it. I think um, he's having a hard time because how do you show that the universe came into being? Whatever created the universe can't reside within the universe because the universe can't create itself. There has to be something that goes beyond the universe that created it. Sounds like God to me, doesn't it? It has to be non-material, and Scripture says that God is, is spiritual, is spirit. God is a spirit. Let's listen to the madness of... The mad scientist, Lawrence Krauss, he's going to get upset. Do you want to, do you want to reflect on what you heard in that clip? Yeah, well, again, I, I'm a little worried about this DVD, and I haven't seen it, but it seems to be pretty biased. But the, the um, I use the word believe there, and I try not to use the word believe as a scientist, but what I, what I tried to show is that, um, and what is was discussed a little bit in that DVD, is remarkably, first of all, it's, well, not only is it plausible that the universe could be created from no universe, but interestingly, and this is, was a central point of my book, if you ask what would be the characteristics of a universe that would have come from nothing, 
by the laws of physics at least as we understand, uh, that those of the universe, the characteristics of the universe would be precisely the characteristics of the universe we observe. Does that prove that happened? Absolutely not, but it makes it plausible. And the fact that it's plausible is remarkable and worth celebrating. Now, the, the point is that um, we don't understand the ultimate laws of physics, so what we're doing is speculating on this, but we, we have had revolutionary developments in our, in our observational understanding and our theoretical underpinning that have allowed us at least to get to the threshold of realizing that it's plausible. It, first of all, seems like a miracle. In fact, it was a miracle of the body. Now, I'm pausing it there. He is going all over the place. He never explains how the universe can come into being out of nothing. And nobody in their right mind believes the universe created itself out of nothing. This is what Lawrence Krauss, even though he has absolutely no evidence of it, he doesn't even have a theory put together of it. And John Lennox is finally going to basically say, look, this is rubbish, this stupid stuff that <laughs> that Lawrence Krauss is talking about. Finally, someone tells him, and Lawrence Krauss goes nuts like a mad scientist. Okay, so we let's get started with this again. He just talked about it looking like a miracle. Back to Lawrence Krauss, the mad scientist. Bible that you could get a hundred billion galaxies. Well, no, in the Bible because I didn't know about them, but that you could get everything we see in the universe, all the stars, with, from those stars. It seems like you need some. It violates some laws of physics, and one of the great discoveries is it doesn't violate any laws of physics to create all of the observed matter in the universe from no matter. It's the first kind of miracle that science has shown is not a miracle, and, and then one can proceed from there. So, so this question, it does seem counterintuitive, but the great thing about science is it has told us that our intuition is not worth relying on. Now notice he's not answering the question. He's saying all matter came from no matter. He doesn't explain how this miracle happened. He talks about it looking like a miracle and everything. He doesn't explain it. Let's get to, let's let him finish up and now listen to what John Lennox says. But notice Lawrence Krauss, the mad scientist, he won't answer the question. He'll go around it. I would compare him to a used car salesman, but I don't want to offend any used car salesman. Used car salesman, every used car salesman I've met has more integrity than the mad scientist here. Let's continue. We, as Richard Dawkins often says, has evolved on the savanna to escape lines, not to understand quantum mechanics. <laughs> I mean, you, you, and you believe that in that sense, the discovery of um, Big Bang cosmology and, and the, the theories that now have actually squeezed God out of the explanatory um, position, if you like. Well, rather the, the than... whole history of God, is, I mean, the whole history of science is not just to squeeze God out. God was never there in the first place. Now, you notice God was never there in the first place. Um, he won't admit, he won't come out and say God doesn't exist, but he'll say little phrases like God was never there in the first place and things like that. But when push comes to shove and, and you say, are you making that statement that you believe God doesn't exist? He won't say it. He won't claim God doesn't exist. It's hard to find him saying that. Even later on in the debate, when you go to, um, you know, debates on video.blogspot.com, you can watch this whole video debate. He says, I never said that in my book. I never said that God doesn't exist. So it's just, he's a mad scientist. Check it out. You know, it make it seem as if this God question is an important one. As Steve Weinberg, who was also on the video, said, most scientists don't even think enough about God to know if they're atheists. It's never discussed at meetings. You never need to talk about God to understand anything in the universe that we see. And therefore, God is completely irrelevant to the physical universe and everything we've discovered in the last 500 years. So Okay, I'm going to stop it one more time. He says it's never discussed at meetings. That's all they ever talk about is God. You can look on YouTube and look at all these meetings that he's having with Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris. And by the way, if you want to see Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris lose in debate, go to debatesonvideo.blogspot.com. You'll see them lose horribly on debate, like all atheists always do, to be honest with you. That's why we have the debate video blog. We believe the debates are awesome. But that's all atheists ever talk about is God. I mean, they're obsessed with God. Um, so let's get back to the mad scientist. 
God has never, it's not like he's been squeezed out, he's never there in the first place. Okay, well we'll get a response from John Lennox on the whole question of a universe from nothing in a moment's time and whether God is a satisfactory explanation. John, let's have you respond then to this whole area of the, the beginning of the universe and, and whether it could have come from nothing and so on. Um, just give us your thoughts on that clip and, and Lawrence's thoughts on it. Well, now, as to the universe out of nothing, it's not that I simply find it counterintuitive. I find it totally incomprehensible, uh, increasingly so as I come through Lawrence's book. What now, <laughs> this is where John Lennox talks about the book written by the mad scientist. And John Lennox just is basically saying, you know, come on, Lawrence, you know, have some dignity. Why would you write such a fictional book? Uh, so listen to this. This is where it gets dicey, and I'll try not to interrupt and bring up different points, but there's a couple that I want to bring up, but uh, here we go. What am I to make of, for instance, the statement, since something is physical, nothing must be physical? That, to my mind, pardon me for saying so, is complete nonsense. <laughs> I love John Lennox, so he's basically telling Lawrence Krauss, this is, book is just complete nonsense that you wrote. Um, and someone had to say it. Someone needs to tell these nut job atheists, let's just say it like it is, these people are nuts, like Lawrence Krauss. He's insane. Um, <laughs> someone needs to tell these people, look, you're nuts, and these theories you have are absolutely crazy that nothing created the universe. Um, so let's get back to John Lennox talking to the mad scientist. And nothing, then, John. nothing in the Is ordinary the sense. No, the nothing in the ordinary philosophical sense is the no, absence of. I don't care about philosophy. Just of well, that's your problem, Lawrence. That's well, your maybe, problem. But we're talking and science here. you are writing for the general public, and you're claiming that the universe comes from nothing, and you give three or no. four different definitions of it, no, which are I'm increasingly speculative. And the first one, this business, since um, uh, something is physical, nothing must be, is is just a. A nonsense what is nothing, then? <laughs> John Lennox, he, I don't know how he, he keeps, he's such a gentleman, and he's telling Lawrence Krauss again, it's a statement, just nonsense. Someone needs to tell these atheists that what they're peddling is nonsense. But then again, the Bible was correct. You know, it never ceases to amaze me the stupid things that people will promote once they try to convince themselves God doesn't exist and that nothing created the universe. Oh my gosh, let's continue with the comedy. Is nothing it's, not the absence of something? It's the absence of anything. And okay. it's there for the absence physical? of space. Is it's anything, the absence of anything? It's what's the anything? Just, I, I'm trying to respond, Lawrence. I let you speak. Okay. You're not letting okay. me speak. Yeah. The moderator has to step in, and this is a debate. You notice John Lennox wasn't interrupting, but Lawrence Krauss, again, like the unruly stepchild that needs to be put in time out, he is a mad scientist. And I think what's happening, he's getting a lot of atheists saying, why are you going around saying nothing's creating the universe? It's making us look bad, the atheists are saying. So how, why would he get so upset when John Lennox is mentioning it, because this is probably the, literally the 50th time someone has told Lawrence Krauss, would you please quit saying this rubbish? But then again, this is what mad scientists do. Okay. Can I say something? Go ahead, John. Go ahead. Okay. What it seems to me your book does and is to, because you cannot answer the question in the ordinary sense of getting something out of uh, nothing in its commonly understood sense, you make a series of progressively speculative redefinitions of nothing. You first of all have nothing as empty space or a quantum vacuum, and then you talk about electron-positron pairs popping out of empty space near a nucleus of an atom, so that's not nothing. You have to have atoms there for that to happen. You notice, um, you notice that John Lennox just pointed out basically a lie 
that Lawrence Krauss told. But John Lennox is more of a gentleman. I would basically tell, if it was me, I would say, you know what, you're just a liar. You're a charlatan, Lawrence Krauss. You're a mad scientist. And just to make money and sell his books, he's willing to go and lie. But John Lennox always being the gentleman even as he's being interrupted and everything, John Lennox said, look, please, let me get a word in edgewise. The moderator even has to put Lawrence Krauss in the corner. Um, but this is just, it's just um, typical of what a mad scientist would do. And John Lennox right now is talking about all these things you're saying are nothing are actually something. And he's pointing out all these things. So, Lawrence Krauss dishonestly it's dishonest guys let's just say it like it is you know we don't have to be politically correct when we're reviewing these debates as Christians we should never have to bow down in front of the altar of political correctness and be afraid what these nut job atheists like Lawrence Krauss are going to say we need to call them out and we need to tell them. now there's some atheists that are reasonable they're few and far between but there's some reasonable atheists that you could you could reason with but this guy is a mad scientist and he needs to be called out let's call him out on this <laughs> let's let John Lennox get back to doing it and he does it in a very polite way and then you begin to try to remove space analogically using that first analogy so it becomes increasingly more speculative until you get to the point where you say everything not forbidden by the laws of physics must happen, but that's nonsense as well. Physics doesn't prevent an earthquake happening in London, but it doesn't mean that that must happen one day. So I think <laughs> you need to clear up your ideas about nothing. Well, I mean, now that you've misrepresented the book, uh, we can go on. I mean, the point no. is... No, the, no, 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 caught in a lie three times it's Krauss that is misrepresented it is it is the mad scientist and John Lennox is saying how have I misrepresented it and Krauss can't say anything John Lennox is the utmost high caliber gentleman always polite um, if you want to see his debate with uh, Richard Dawkins when he defeated Richard Dawkins you got to check that out do you know Christopher Hitchens debated John Lennox? Um, I have that debate. Also, go to um, debatesonvideo.blogspot.com. And Hitchens admitted that John Lennox defeated him in debate. Well, Krauss needs to admit that he's a mad scientist. Now, there's a part here coming up where John Lennox even just starts laughing because of the madness of Lawrence Krauss. Check it out. You said as commonly understood as commonly represented nothing. Well, I suggest to you that nothing is not commonly represented. Like many words, it's a, it's a colloquial term that means many different things to many people, including in the Bible, where nothing really referred to an infinite void, not which many people would say is empty space. And I think if you ask most people, what is nothing? You come up with the idea of empty space, for example. I've argued that's probably not a good enough definition of nothing. But if empty space is your definition of nothing, then it's perfectly, not only will, not only will something come from it, something is required to come from it. And so science has just changed the definitions. And people may not like that, but I call it learning. Okay. Well, <laughs> you're trying to convince the world of this thing, and... I find reading your book, and I think I've read it four times now, and I've enjoyed reading most of it. Uh, I find it less and less convincing. <laughs> so he says, John Lennox says, every time I read it, your book becomes less convincing. Guys, this is comedy 101. This is epic. Let's get to the part where... Uh, Listen to John Lennox laughing. In fact, interestingly enough, I, I did a debate with Alan Guth at MIT not long ago, and I asked him about this question. I said, uh, Alan, is it the case that when you talk about nothing, you are not talking about nothing in the commonly accepted sense of absence of being? And he said, no, we are not. So he seemed to agree with me in the common understanding of nothing. I mean, the, well, I mean, the, the question I is, would agree that absence of being is, a, is not a bad definition, and, and it's certainly clear that 
uh, space and time didn't exist, and space and time came into but, existence. But then that ruins your initial that. statement. That's if you what? think it's absence of being, you cannot say that it is physical, since something is physical. Surely that's straight well, nonsense. Yeah, no, I have to know what being is, to know what the absence of it is. Darkness is the absence of light. Don't you think I have to know what Watch. light is in order to say, know what darkness is? It doesn't define Linux darkness. is going to start cracking up. But Krause I didn't make the statement, Lawrence. You made it. So I presume you know what you're talking about. And to say that because something is physical, you must know what something is. Nothing must be physical, but nothing by it's any definition is the, physical. no, it's the opposite of something. It's the absence of something. And you are attributing the property of uh, physicality to something and its exact opposite. In fact, the Ten absence seconds, of it. What? And to my mind, that is clearly nonsense. But, well, let me make it clear. You misunderstand what I mean by physical. I mean, when I say physical... <laughs> Guys, this this is madness in its purest form, what Krauss is trying to talk about. Now let's get to the piece de resistance. Let's get to the best part, the filet mignon, where John Lennox basically tells Lawrence Krauss, you haven't proved atheism. My atheist friends, listen, this is the problem. You guys are preaching to the choir. You're preaching to your atheist friends. You need to convince rational people, not atheists. You need to convince the rational world that atheism is true. You have to provide proof and evidence that would show atheism is accurate and correct. I strongly suggest, especially if you're one of our sweet, cuddly, lovable, huggable atheist subscribers, Look for a video called Proof Atheism is Madness. It's right here on our channel. But let's get to the part now where Linux tells him you haven't proved your atheism. So here we go. Um, Krauss hangs himself here and he says, you should believe in things that have evidence. You should go where the evidence is at. But Krauss has not provided proof and evidence that would show atheism is accurate and correct in, in this debate. Um, and in any debate, he's never done it in any of his books. Listen what John Lennox says here after Krauss um, says that you should go where the evidence is. Watch. You should, be, you should ask the question, what evidence is there? You shouldn't well, believe anyone. There are no scientific authorities. That's the key thing I try and uh, I try and convey. You don't quote people, Lawrence Krauss or Alan Sandage or anything else. The question is, what evidence does the universe provide? And that's what the listeners of this program should listen to: is what evidence, what physical evidence, what falsifiable evidence, what tests can but you, you make? You've given me no that's evidence for atheism. In fact, what? your book has helped confirm my faith. <laughs> so good. So his book. Lawrence Krauss's book has helped confirm that Christianity is more rational and it is true. John Lennox is a Christian. Now, what's really funny is John Lennox says the main problem with atheism is there is absolutely no proof and evidence that would show atheism is accurate and correct. The mad scientist here on the right certainly hasn't proven it. Check this out. So go to uh, go here, guys, debatesonvideo.blogspot.com, and you can see the entire debate. Uh, you also can see where the crowd laughs at Richard Dawkins. And this one's really good, too, where uh, agnostic Matt Dillahunty loses a debate. Check them all out.